Live to Capitol Hill, now the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. Uh, all the senators who uh, wanted to hear from us, we talked about U.S. policy in Yemen and U.S. policy with respect to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, we also obviously uh, spoke about the heinous murder of Jamal Khashoggi, uh, and we made clear uh, that they're considering debating a resolution on the Senate floor, which we think is just poorly timed. Uh, we are on the cusp of allowing the U.S. envoy Martin Griffiths to, in December, uh, gather the parties together and hopefully get a ceasefire. In Yemen, something that we have diplomatically been striving for for months, and we think we're right on the cusp of that. And so it is the view of the administration, Secretary Mattis and myself, uh, that passing a resolution at this point undermines that. It would encourage the Houthis, it would encourage the Iranians, it would, it would undermine the fragile agreement for everyone to go to uh, Sweden and have this discussion. So we hope uh, that they'll consider that, be thoughtful in how they proceed, and we're happy to give them further information if they uh, should so choose. Secretary Pompeo. Secretary Pompeo. Secretary Pompeo. CIA director, why wasn't the current CIA director here briefing senators as well? I was asked to be here, and here I am. But Mr. senators were very frustrated. Normally, in your past role as CIA director, you would be here briefing these senators on an issue this sensitive. Why isn't the CIA director herself here today? I was asked to be here, and I'm here. You've seen all the intelligence, presumably. Do you believe that the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia ordered Jamal Khashoggi's killer? I do believe. I've read every piece of intelligence, unless it's come in in the last few hours. I think I've read it all. There is no direct reporting connecting the Crown Prince to the order to murder Jamal Khashoggi. And that's all I can say in an unclassified sense. Thank you. Is he responsible? Yes, ma'am. Are there any scheduled time for the meeting? Are there any scheduled time for I don't have anything to add on uh, the sequence of events in North Korea. But I'm very hopeful we will have senior level meetings before too long. Is this is you, you say you're on the precipice of a, a deal. Um, I'd say a deal. A, a, or a, yeah. a, a of the first agreement. opportunity for all them to get together. All yes. of Trump's public statements indicate that uh, Iran is very far from coming to the table for negotiations. How do you rectify the two? Which, well, is, which is true. Well, the, 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 the parties that will be there will be those who are engaged in the civil war in Yemen. So there'll be representatives from the uh, Yemeni government, from the Houthis, all those interested parties. We hope the Iranians won't upset the apple cart. They have been funding, arming, providing assistance and support to the Houthis, which have allowed the Houthis to continue to fight well, on, well beyond what would have made any sense at all. And we do hope the Iranians won't upset this opportunity to uh, both resolve the civil war and give everyone the opportunity to resolve a massive humanitarian crisis that's in Yemen today. Thank, Thank you. you all Thank very you everybody. Much. You've been listening to the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, up on Capitol Hill, emerging from a briefing with senators, contentious at times, we are told, uh, on two big issues that are related. Uh, number one, uh, the ongoing war in Yemen and the effort by some in the United States Senate to get the United States to pull back from supporting Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates in their civil war, essentially, against Houthi rebels inside of Yemen. Number two, because of the timing, uh, any question about Saudi Arabia now brings in is there evidence connecting the Saudi Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman, to the brutal murder of the Washington Post journalist, Jamal Khashoggi? Uh, Secretary Pompeo emerging, uh, answering questions there. A couple things. He said at one point that he has seen no direct evidence or no direct report. I'm trying to get the exact word. There was a lot of crosstalk up there. Uh, directly linking the Crown Prince. That is the Secretary's answer. We know and there's been various reporting here at CNN, many other fine media organizations, that the CIA has concluded that there is evidence that the Crown Prince was the orchestrated the killing. Uh, number two, uh, he was asked repeatedly about one thing the senators were very frustrated about. Why wasn't the CIA director there to answer those specific questions? And he smirked a couple of times. He says, I was asked to be here. I am here. I was asked to be here. I am here. And those <laughs> questions were great because they said, you are the former CIA director. Why is it the current CIA director who has listened to the audio of this killing, traveled to Turkey, traveled to Riyadh? Why is she not here briefing us? And you, he didn't answer the question. He said twice, I'm here because I was asked to be here. And we know sources told us the White House did not want to send Gina Haspel there, even though the senators clearly wanted her to be there. But I think if we come out of this and we're seeing these complaints from the senators, this is going to end up backfiring on the administration because they're going to feel that they're not getting a sufficient response to this murder. They're going to take action right, on their and own. To clear that up, well, we had our folks go back and listen to the tape more cleanly. Secretary Pompeo, Pompeo said there's no direct reporting that ties MBS to the murder. Now we know the CIA 
has an analysis that, again, a number of sources, including congressional sources and media accounts, have said does say that they believe he is responsible for ordering this. Uh, so there's two questions here. One is the substance. Why does the administration want to keep away the person who knows the most? The CIA director has the most information. This has been her job. The administration does not want to allow the United States Senate, still currently controlled by the president's own party, by the way. Uh, so this is not just a poke the Democrats. This is a poke the Congress. Uh, they won't put the most informed person in the room to answer these questions. That's the substance of this. And then there's the tone, which we talked about a little bit earlier. Forgive me, but Mike Pompeo, a former member of the House, was being smug there. Yeah. Uh, smiling, smirking, rolling his eyes. You know, I'm here. Don't ask me about somebody yeah, else. And it continues sort of the tone, I think, of his Wall Street Journal uh, op-ed, where he talks about sort of the cattle rolling on, on Capitol Hill and dismissing uh, those folks. It's clear why the White House and this administration wants to keep the CIA director uh, away from the Senate, because she is directly contradicting what the president uh, believes, so this idea that uh, MBS didn't have any involvement. They have, uh, with a high degree of certainty, uh, concluded that he directed this murder. So they don't want to have senators uh, hear from her because that is what her and, and her team assess. And, and yeah, this seems to have, have made it worse. I mean, in terms of going up to the Senate, uh, being kind of smirky and jerky uh, in that uh, press conference and in this op-ed uh, and really dismissing the role that these senators have. Yeah. Uh, and Phil Mattingly has been up there on Capitol Hill. Uh, Phil, uh, Secretary Pompeo's big message coming out was he hoped uh, that his coming up, Secretary Mattis coming up, uh, would convince the Senate to hit the pause button and at least see if these planned ceasefire talks in Sweden uh, can get any legs underneath them. Uh, was he successful or are the senators now even more willing to go forward? I can tell you, John, at least the senators that came out and spoke to us, and frankly, a lot of the Senate aides I've been talking to over the course of the last hour or so, it had the opposite effect of assuaging the concerns of maybe pulling them back from this resolution they'll vote on as soon as this afternoon. And I think that that comes in, in multiple reasons, at least in talking to the senators. One, you guys have been talking about the fact that CIA Director Haspel uh, did not come up here. That was a request of both Republicans and Democrats. But also, I think the posture that Secretary Pompeo took in the opinion piece this morning that you guys were discussing, that blew back in a major way. Going into this briefing, I talked to a number of senators on uh, background who were saying that they were very frustrated by that. They felt like that they were being pegged uh, as, as opposition, uh, being tied to the Iran deal, things of that nature, uh, that they took offense to. A lot of staff felt the same way. And then I think just the, the general kind of way that the administration has gone about the response here, saying that it's essentially zero sum, that you're either with us on this and you're with us on our Saudi relationship or you want to cut ties altogether. And the senators say that there's a middle ground here. I think the interesting element uh, of what's about to happen when this vote occurs, why Secretaries Mattis and Pompeo were actually up here today to try and stop that, is that this will be a tremendous rebuke of the administration. Usually, John, you know this as well as anybody, when these briefings occur, they are usually very effective. They usually do a very good job of knocking back, particularly when the president's party is in power. It seems, coming out of this, several senators have already said they voted against this resolution the first time around. They are changing their votes. Sir, uh, Senator Bob Corker, the top Republican on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, said he is willing to vote to get on to the resolution, maybe not at the end, but at least get on it and have the debate, barring some administration shift in tone over the course of the next couple of hours. If they were trying to stop this in, it tr in its tracks, and it's been very fluid, the vote count's been very fluid, I'm told, uh, they certainly didn't succeed. We'll see what the end game is of that, but there's a lot more frustration coming out of their briefing than there was people who were happy or at least assuaged with their concerns.